Hello. Welcome to Film Focus Recaps. The universe has been conquered by an evil empire known as the Mother World. Their leader is Balisarius, who took over after the royal family was assassinated. There are some rebel groups forming on various planets, so the empire is sending out soldiers all over to crush them down. A few weeks ago, Admiral Atticus landed on Velt and asked the farmers to prepare all their grain for his army, promising to come back for it in 10 weeks. Giving all their harvest to the soldiers would leave the village with no food, so former Empire soldier Cora and her boyfriend Gunnar traveled around to gather a group of warriors that would help them fight the soldiers. During their trip, they had the chance to find Atticus at a trading post and a battle ensued during which Cora brought the Admiral down. Unfortunately the Empire recovers Atticus' body and puts him in a machine to heal him up. As soon as he's feeling better, Atticus announces he wants revenge. Meanwhile on Velt, Cora and Velt return to their village with the team of warriors they've gathered. A robot called Jimmy, who used to belong to the Empire, watches from afar while waiting for his moment. Former soldier Aris has also betrayed the Empire, so when his commander calls to check on the harvest progress, Aris pretends his team is fine and working when actually Korra killed them all. Aris is on the village's side now and informs the others that the Empire will be arriving in five days. General Titus gathers all the villagers and the team to offer an empowering speech. He has an idea, since the grain is so important for the soldiers, they'll use it as protection for their houses. That way the Empire can't bomb the village without destroying the loot in the process. Titus also announces the warriors will train the villagers in the art of military warfare so they can stand their ground when the time comes. Afterward, Gunnar and Korra meet in private and finally have their first time together. Once they're done, Korra shares why she's a wanted criminal. Korra is Balisarius' adopted daughter and she used to work for the Empire. She was such a great soldier that she eventually became the prince's bodyguard. One day, the king decided he was tired of all the war and that he would start taking a more peaceful approach in politics. Balisarius hated this because it would take power away from him and his army, so he and the other lords arranged a meeting with the royal family to ambush them. While Balisarius stabbed the king and queen, Cora followed her father's orders and shot all the royal guards, then she turned her gun on the princess. She hesitated to kill such a young girl, who looked at Cora in the eye and said I forgive you. At that moment Balisarius yelled at Cora to make her react and Cora fired her gun, killing the princess. However instead of being grateful for Cora's help, Balisarius used her as a scapegoat and announced she killed the whole royal family ordering other soldiers to arrest her. Devastated by this betrayal, Cora shot her teammates to break free, but she couldn't bring herself to shoot her own father. Instead she ran away, changed her name, and hid in the Velt farm while pretending to be a regular war orphan. Back to the present, Atticus is throwing a tantrum in the medical bay because the doctors won't release him and he's tired of waiting. After lots of yelling, he ends up killing a doctor and is finally allowed to go back to work. Another soldier notices the medical team left a scar on Atticus' chest, but he decides not to heal it because it's a reminder of his need for revenge. That mark is where Cora hurt him during the last fight, and for this Atticus begins calling her the scar giver. For the following five days all the villagers and the team of warriors wake up incredibly early to take care of the harvest. Working side by side allows them to bond and improve their teamwork, which is part of the training too. The group harvests the grain through reaping, gathering, threshing, and finally turning the grain into flour. During these days, Nemesis gets to bond with the local children too, which helps her heal after having lost her own kids. Titus makes sure to only drink water to avoid falling back into his old addiction. Aris continues to get calls from his commander, who thinks it's weird the other soldiers never appear on the screen. Without hesitation, Aris says the others are keeping an eye on the harvest so the villagers won't scam them and that he got stuck on phone duty for being the newbie. However after the last call, Atticus can tell Aris is lying and guesses Cora is behind it. When the harvest is finally over, the village gathers for a celebration and Sam gives each warrior a homemade banner with an emblem that represents their personalities. Then the crowd finally celebrates the end of the harvest with lots of dancing and drinking. Titus even sings for everyone a soothing, nostalgic tune that is heard by Jimmy on the hills. The next day, the actual training begins, starting by moving all the grain from the barns into the actual village and putting it around every house. They also dig a hidden trench across the fields, hoping it'll help them gain the element of surprise. Aris brings out all the weapons his former team left behind, and the villagers search for any hunting rifles and knives they may have around. Cora and Titus teach the locals how to shoot the guns, and while some still prefer to stick to blades because it's similar to farming, others like Sam prove to be natural shooters. The ship Cora escaped in is still in the mountains, so the villagers work together to drag it out and fix it in case they need it. After Aris takes care of any issues the ship could have acquired during the long time it's been abandoned, Cora gives it a test drive and confirms it's working just fine. The night before the enemy's arrival, Titus points out they should share why each of them wants to bring down the Empire, that way they can strengthen their bond. He volunteers to go first and explains he used to be a general for the Empire. One day, a colonized realm voted to leave and gain independence from the Empire. However Balisarius wouldn't respect their wishes and sent Titus with his team to open fire on the capital. Titus refused to follow such orders and his ship was shot down, 
but his team still supported him. Together they fought against the empire, yet they were easily overpowered so Titus offered a deal, his surrender in exchange for his men's lives. His plea was ignored and his entire team was executed in front of him. Since then, Titus feels guilty for causing all those deaths and swears to never surrender to the empire again. Inspired by Titus' story, the other warriors share theirs as well. Melius is also from a humble farm, but her people refused to fight and gave the soldiers everything. The farmers were captured and sent to labor camps all over the universe, causing Melius to end up in a mining operation. One day the resistance arrived, killed all the Empire soldiers, and freed the slaves. Since then Melius has been fighting with them. Next, Nemesis shares that she comes from a small fishing village which was unfortunately destroyed by the Empire. All the locals were slaughtered and Nemesis had to watch her family die. After a terrible breakdown, Nemesis was hungry for revenge, so she searched for the hidden weapons that the village kept from the old days when they weren't pacifists. She had never spilled blood before, so she used the molten metal blades to start with her own. This was part of an ancient rite of passage that allowed her to replace her arms with mechanical gauntlets. When it's Tarek's turn, he confesses he used to be the prince of his planet. His father the king tried presenting his own terms to the empire, who answered by sending back his body and promising an invasion. Soon the enemy ships appeared on Tarek's home and destroyed the entire place without hesitation. His mother the queen couldn't take it and Tarek had to watch herself delete. Tarek escaped by hiding in a refugee transport, hoping to preserve his bloodline in the future. After everyone is done sharing, Titus asks Korra for her own story, but she only says she's a war orphan and that she also used to be an empire soldier. Titus gets suspicious when she doesn't add more, but he doesn't press. The next morning, Korra gets on her ship and flies to the mountains, where she crosses a waterfall to enter a cave and meet with Jimmy. They bond over the fact they both used to work for the Empire and now have found a new purpose in protecting the innocent. However Jimmy thinks their chances of winning the battle are low. In the village, the locals finish hiding a bunch of bombs in the trench just in time for the arrival of the enemy ships. As everyone rushes to their positions, Atticus and their men use a radar to investigate the situation. They discover the grain is being used as a shield so they can't open fire, but they also notice all the women and children are being kept in the longhouse. Atticus announces he'll pretend to negotiate with Korra while sending men there. Soon a bunch of smaller ships land on Velt and Atticus meets with Korra, who offers the soldiers to take the grain and leave without a fight so they can avoid a bloodshed. However Atticus wants a bigger reward now, thus he explains his men are already surrounding the longhouse. He won't open fire if Korra agrees to go with him. Wanting to protect the locals, Korra signals her friends to step back and agrees to leave with Atticus. First she says goodbye to Gunner, who refuses to lose her and steals her gun to shoot at the town bell, which is the signal to start the battle. The fighters come out of hiding and immediately open fire, blowing up an enemy ship and forcing the soldiers to scatter. This pushes Gunner and Korra in the water, a chance they used to escape on a mount for an alternate plan. The explosion gives the villagers the upper hand and soon Empire soldiers are falling all over the place. Furious, Atticus jumps into the trenches and starts killing villagers up close to try to disturb their organization. Some surviving soldiers try to escape in their ships, but the villagers throw bombs at them to quickly bring them down. In the longhouse, the soldiers burst in and Nemesis fights them with her blades while Aris and Sam provide backup with their guns. Nemesis is an amazing warrior and she manages to bring down several soldiers on her own, but they just keep coming. Eventually Atticus manages to leave the trenches, which he's been using as protection, and makes it to the ship near the longhouse. As he gets aboard, a villager jumps in and tries to kill him with his knife, however Atticus easily overpowers him with a few moves. After killing the man with his own blade, Atticus pushes the body off the ship. At the same time, Korra and Gunner get on her old ship and use a smoke bomb to pretend it's been shot. Since it's an Empire ship, the enemy thinks they're soldiers and let them enter the main vessel. The duo hides their faces with Empire gear and pretend to be unconscious so they're taken to the infirmary. Back in the village, Titus and Tarek give their respective teams powerful speeches to inspire them to fight. They meet the soldiers without fear and launch a fearsome attack. In the longhouse, Nemesis continues to fight, however the numbers of enemies keep going up and soon her mechanical arm gets cut off. Sam is also overpowered and her gun destroyed, but before she can get killed, Aris jumps on the soldier to bring him down. Nemesis refuses to give up and keeps fighting with one hand, but she's soon knocked down and stabbed. Furious, one of the children comes out of hiding and stabs the soldier, who grabs the kid by the neck. This allows Nemesis to strike back and finally kill the last of the enemies in the longhouse. The child hugs Nemesis, who says goodbye and then dies. In the trenches, most of that team is dead so a villager activates the bombs to bring as many soldiers down as possible. Unfortunately the cavalry continues to pour in, making it difficult for Tarek's and Titus teams to defend the village no matter how hard they fight. Soon the soldiers bring multiple automatons, which open fire faster than any human can keep up with. While the villagers continue to open fire, Milius sneaks around in the smoke and kills a few soldiers with a blade. This allows her to come close enough to the automatons and shoot them in their weak areas to bring them down and give the villagers a chance. 
In the main vessel, Korra and Gunnar wait for the right moment to take out their weapons and kill all the soldiers that surround them. Then they share a kiss before taking different corridors to set up a bunch of bombs. Because of their uniforms, at first they move unnoticed, but soon a soldier finds Korra in the power core room. She immediately shoots him and jumps into the lower floor, where she continues to fight any guard that gets in her way. One of the soldiers sends a message about this attack, and Atticus gets happy that Korra is technically captured. Since she's his ticket to success, he orders his men to open fire on the village, not caring about the grain or the soldiers they may lose in the process. In the village, another automaton arrives with even more soldiers, and the locals are starting to lose hope. Suddenly Jimmy appears on the battlefield and starts moving at an outstanding speed. He kills a bunch of enemies and gets inside the automaton to blow it up, which gives the villagers a fighting chance again. Back in the vessel, Gunner is waiting for Korra to escape. However Korra keeps on encountering enemies and can't stop fighting every two steps. She steals a blade from a soldier and meets with Atticus while his men get the cannons ready. However at that moment the bombs explode and shake the vessel, causing the cannons to miss and hit the hills instead of the village. As the vessel starts going down, Gunner comes in and tries to show Atticus, only to be shot first. Then Atticus and Korra start a sword fight that has them sliding all over the room as the vessel continues to fall. Korra kicks Atticus off but he manages to hold on at the last second and attacks again. Both warriors lose their blades in the process and Atticus jumps on top of Korra, trying to choke her. However he's interrupted by Gunner, who stabs him with a blade. Now Korra can push Atticus off, capture him in a door, and finally cut his head off. Korra and Gunner return to her old ship and manage to escape just in time before the vessel crashes on the planet with a huge explosion. Korra's ship does a rough landing too and she rushes to help Gunner, but it's too late and he dies in her arms. At that moment the resistance arrives with their ships and they help the villagers finish the battle, effectively defeating the enemy while everyone on the ground celebrates. That evening, everyone gathers to say goodbye to Gunner, Nemesis, and all the fallen villagers, burning their banners along with their bodies. Feeling guilty, Korra finally shares her backstory with everyone, but Titus drops a big secret, the princess isn't actually dead because she holds a great power. Korra wants to find her and continue to fight the Empire to free all the other planets, and the rest of the warriors including Jimmy promise to help. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.